the first big matchup of Americans and Germans in World War II erupts in North Africa in early 1943. Untested American troops against the seasoned veterans of the Desert Fox, wily German tank commander Erwin Rommel. The Americans take a pounding at first. On this 360 degree battlefield, there's nowhere to run when the war is all around. Patton 360, Rommel's last stand. February 20th, 1943. Kasserine Pass in Tunisia. The German 10th Panzer Division is closing in for the slaughter. One mile north, the target? Green American troops in the floor of the pass. American forces have been in North Africa for three months, but this is their first big showdown with the warriors of the Third Reich. Allied leaders have decided that the American troops need more experience before taking on Hitler's main forces in Europe. But since landing in North Africa in November, they've only faced poorly trained French colonial units, not the Germans. Only 2,000 American troops guard the mouth of Kasserine Pass. Backed up by four Sherman tanks, 36 tank destroyers, and 18 artillery pieces. They're facing 8,000 German attackers with 100 tanks and 65 artillery pieces. And they had us outnumbered, outgunned, everything else. Commanding the German attackers is a master of armored warfare, the Desert Fox. Field Marshal Erwin Rommel. Rommel's skill and fierceness are already legendary. Bold, aggressive action, leadership from the front, very much personally involved with the conduct of battle. Rommel's key offensive weapon is the Mark IV Panzer. As the tanks close in, German artillery and rocket launchers pound the American defenses. It got pretty rough. The Americans are on the brink of collapse. The outnumbered Americans could use a tough battlefield commander like George Patton. But he's not in command at Kasserine. He's back in Morocco. The American in charge is Major General Lloyd Friedendahl. He's considered an excellent trainer of soldiers, but he hasn't shown strong battlefield leadership. He really set his force up for failure. He employed his forces on a very broad front, all sort of pushed toward the front. Friedendahl is also nowhere near the front line. He's playing it safe. 60 miles away. Within minutes, the German panzers punch through the thin American defense. As the widely dispersed American soldiers in the valley floor give way, defenders a mile in the rear consider their options. Rommel's troops push the disheartened Americans back more than 50 miles. There's a belief that, my God, can we fight these people? Are we good enough to fight the Germans? Within a few days, British and American reinforcements slow the German advance. Then, Rommel decides to withdraw his forces back through the pass to shore up his eastern flank. On March 4th, theater commander Dwight Eisenhower fires General Friedendahl and summons Patton. Aggressive as they come, and the difference between his leadership style and Lloyd Friedendahl's is instantly apparent. He's got his thumb right on the pulse. He improves mail delivery, he improves their food, he does the small things that are important to a soldier. Military discipline is absent, and it's the backbone of successful armies. <laughs> 